Mark, congratulations for the ASM Gibbs Award. Today, I'm going to talk about a catheter for material design enhanced by high throughput computations. CAFAT is about thermodynamic modeling. It models the properties of individual phases through Gibbs energy function. As uh, here shows it Gibbs energy of alpha phase as a function of temperature, pressure, composition, cos i. Cos i is very important. It's the internal variables. So CAFAT is a community. It has the annual conference. It's a golden conference style since 1973. It has a private foundation since 1975, which supports scholarships and awards at a conference. And the CAFAT has a journal published since 1977. There are a lot, number of tools and databases. And what, some of them published in a special issue of CAFAT in volume 26, issue two. And that the tools are, are some of them are commercial ones, like ThermoCAC, Fact Stage, CompuSum, Pandat, Geomatic Pro, and Matacac. And recently, there are some open source ones Open Cafet, Thermochemica, and also PyCAF SBA, which developed it in my group. And it has high school Cafet modeling with uncertain quantification. So, one question people often ask is, it's thermodynamics for equilibrium only. If you look at the first law, no, it doesn't have to be equilibrium. It only says that the internal energy change is equal to the heat exchange or the heat from the surrounding, the work from the surrounding, and the mass from the surrounding. Of course, you can also give out the heat, that the work to outside, side, and no lose the mass. However, we look at the the combining of Gibbs is for equilibrium only. So the difference here now, now the heat part where temperature times entropy, the, the, the work and the mass. Now it's chemical potential instead of the internal energy. So this equation developed by, developed by Gibbs is for equilibrium only. So what's the difference here? The difference is that there's another term I just mentioned, it's Kasai there. What's Kasai? because I are internal state variables. So anything internal, not controlled from outside. So that means something that happened inside give you the extra energy. The DJ, the driving force for your internal process. So when this equals zero, it's equilibrium. When not equal zero, system is not an equilibrium. So now if you go to Gibbs energy, it looks like a DG equal to now change SDD, VDB, and it's the chemical potential, this term re remains there. That means not equilibrium. Again, if this is equal to zero, is that equilibrium? So what does that mean? That means Gibbs energy is a function of temperature, pressure, composition, and internal degree freedom. That's what I mentioned. That's what, that's what CAFAT models. Okay, so it's a function of temperature, pressure, composition, and internal degree of field, internal variables. Of course, we can also add electric field, right? Magnetic field too. So in, in one of the papers I wrote last year in 2020, I wrote an overview paper article on the computation of some of the amp and its applications. Okay. So usually we talk about thermodynamics. It's for the stability, metastability, and instability. Instability, we did not, we do not talk very much. In addition to this stability, we can also talk about a cross phenomenon, CPI coefficient, solar coefficient, piezo paroelectric properties. There's a cross phenomenon. And we can also talk about the, some of the dynamics of transport, about divisivity. You can calculate divisivity from some of the dynamics and the conductivity too. And you will one step further, we can talk about mechanical properties. Elastic property, of course, that's obvious. But also plastic properties too. How about the street, the, the hardening? Okay. So in that paper where I tried to put a, a, those a, a publications, we have had I know in the literature and how the computation some of the dynamics can be applied to those different properties. 
So let's go back to cafe and model, right? So it's about individual faces. So it keeps energy of individual faces. That's very important. And actually now we're go, we, we are moving beyond the individual faces, talk about the configurations. Okay, so that really means is that for each configuration you have, you can have energy, right? Okay, so this psi i, you can think about it, it actually defines the configuration. So you have many, many configurations in the system. And how do we get this data then? Well, to input the data for this, for Gibson, of course, it's derivatives, right? Heat capacity, entropy, entropy, activity, they're all derivatives of the free energy. So they can actually be any state. So you can have a non equilibrium state, you can have derivatives. So that's the one we do by the first principle calculations. And uh, if you, the system has the equilibrium, there's no driving force for any internal process, processes. And then you can face equilibrium, you can face stability, you can face boundary. Okay. So that's a key, that's, that's, that's very important in a, a component of cavity modeling is for non-equilibrium state. Well, we still have some work to do for the unstable state, but the misfit gap is unstable state, we can model. But some other ones which you, we are working on, it uh, really depends on the internal degree of freedom to get it all its configurations. So in the cavity modeling, we start with the uh, pure elements, we'll do binary, we'll do ternary, and then we'll do multi-component. So in any case, now we can build up a huge databases for the different uh, uh, materials. For example, you look at the commercial alloys, we have database like six, like a 20, uh, over 20 elements, okay? Uh, when you get database, you can do the material design, you can do equilibrium calculations, you can do driving forces, and you can do the physical chemical properties through the first and second derivatives of the free energy. That's what uh, is they're very, very useful for a lot of different properties. So, so by providing those data, CAFA really supports SME and MGI. As some of you know that uh, when I started at Penn State, inspired by the Human Genome Project, success of the Human Genome Project, and the success of CAFA modeling, I, I coined the term material genome in 2002, and uh, used it for, for the name of my company. And uh, some years later, I wrote a perspective on material genome. And as you know, that in 2004, there was, not, there was a, a very important publication by National Research Council, accelerating technology trans transition, bridging the value of death for materials and processing defense system in 2004. And then 2008, it's SME. In that report, it says CAFAD software is arguably the most important and perhaps the only generic tool available for SME practitioners. And then a few years later, a few years later, we have the uh, Metro Genome Initiative. If you have not read this paper by Greg Olson on the Charlie Human, talk about material dynamics from catheter to flight in 2014, a very nice paper, talk about the, how the catheter is used for this material design and it, the importance of the Metro Genome Initiative. Well, as anything, we know that we all want to do better, right? So there's some challenges for, uh, for a cathode model. For example, for a six component system, A, B, C, D, E, F, as I mentioned, it just starts with the pure elements, with the binary ternary, and sometimes you have a core ternary. The challenge is that the, the big database we have depends on the, all the data we have used to build up the database. For example, if we change the description property of C or the phrase function of C, for one of these phases. And then everything in the of C has to be changed. Everything, they have to be changed because uh, those binary terms that they depend on the property of this one component system. So that's very, very challenging for us. The challenge is that the practice we do is called one-way information flow. So how do we develop a database, right? We take the experiment data, the FDA, data, we do the, we understand it, we, we, we make the new format, software can use, can understand, we spend a lot of time to do the evaluation of the, 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 the model parameters, then we'll publish our data. As soon as we publish the data, we get a database, for example, this one, then all the information we have here are not together, are not, are not are lost, so to speak. They're not together with the database we have. Okay. 
So we want to change that. To change that, we need the tools, right? Okay. So let's go back to how we do it. So a, a 20 years ago, most of the catalytic modeling, we, we are based on experiments and estimations. Okay. And as, you, as many of you know that a 20, 25 years ago, a little bit longer, that first principle calculation become a, became a, a po very powerful user tool, so to speak. And first principle calculation are most of a zero Kelvin. But now you can you can take statistical mechanics into consideration, you can define temperature. So now I can say I take experiment data, first principle data, then you can actually make a much better prediction modeling now, right? So that the, the Kava database has become much better. Okay. So the predictive power is enhanced. So now to make it better, we need more tools. Okay. So our group has been focused on developing high throughput open source codes. And with the capability of uncertain quantification. So if you go to GitHub.com Faces Research Lab, you can see most of our tools available there. So our tools are basically two or, or three uh, categories. First is data generation. The data generation, you can do experiments, of course, but you can do DFT calculations, or you can do the machine learning. Okay, so I have machine learning tools and DFT tools. And then after the data, gives the data process, right? So we have pack of S A, which I'm going to mention a little bit more. And uh, we develop this pack, these two tools for the data processing, the developer high throughput uh, capital modeling, basically. And in addition to that one, is really have answer quantification that's very important. We have. To promote the tools, uh, the use of the tools, we have we formed a, a nonprofit organ, a foundation, Material Genome Foundation. To, to give workshops and the Mantegino Foundation.org and also YouTube give us a workshop uh, recordings there. So DFT toolkit, DFT TK, that's our two, uh, DFT calculations. And these for final temperature, so it's for fair energy, for any configuration, that's Kasai we're talking about. You fix Kasai, you fix temp you, you fix Kasai, right? Fix composition, then you calculate the proper fair energy as function of temperature. And a gift you can build up the, on the tools, a, a, a useful for material project, Atomat, Pymagem, and Fireworks, and Custodian. Okay, on top of this, uh, a very well a libraries we developed the FTK. Well, you can download the, uh, the tool at www.dfttk.org, and we have also a menu there. We're going to add this one into our uh, next workshop uh, in next year in our Medicina Foundation workshop. And then for the machine learning, we develop a code called Superfun. And it's in, the, in the process it get published, it, it, you, can, you can see it on the archive. You can also download it uh, from faceslab.com, Superfun. And in this one, we use the OKMD data and the matrix project data, another databases available online. We, we develop a new network. We give a new network. So in that new network, you have different type, we have got this a group of new networks, not just one, uh, for different purposes, high accuracy and the uh, fast computing and the low memory and so forth. So with this new network, you can get a, we have a new structure, okay, we have a new structure. You can look at whether you have this data in this database or not, right? If you have it in this database, of course you get the data. If, you, if, you do, if they are not available there, you can use the code, and it will give you the formation energy. So, of course, it's much, much faster than DFT calculations. Uh, but uh, but it, so you can get first uh, uh, estimation. Now it's much faster, so you get a lot of the data. This one. And then now we have put all this uh, machine, uh, this uh, uh, structures we have collected. We have like collected there are 4 million, around 4 million structures. Basically, you think about postcard files for, uh, for a RASP code. We started them online. Now it's in the MongoDB data storage on cloud. And you can also have local deployments. And you can use them for the high throughput applications. You can cut a lot of uh, uh, formation is very fast. Again, again, you can access it at facelab.com and APDD. We have not made it public yet, but it should be soon to be public accessible for the data. At the moment, you can see what we have there. The important of this one is that 
We have now one machine learning model for the formation energy, zero Kelvin. We have the next one developing it for the uh, free energy. And they can develop all different models, okay? With the same descriptor, a uh, database, discrete database, you can capture all of them continuously. So the idea is that it be much faster, even down the road, because the, machine, the, 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 the one takes the longest time in machine learning code, the models is the descriptor calculations. Okay, so one develop, develop this one. So that needs to be even faster in the future for massive, okay, high throughput uh, uh, calculations using the machine learning models. So we encourage you to look at what we have there. Oh, not as good as the website there. Okay, now we get all the data, we need to go to the database, right? The Kappa database. Previously, as I mentioned that uh, it's this manual process and it's one way, one way information flow is not automated. And the data input there for the modeling was, uh, are not together with database. It's very difficult to revise databases. So to do that one, so we develop this aspect, aspect.org, you can download the code. And it has to put modeling in two steps. The first step is the model parameter generation. And this part in the, in the, in the typical kind of modeling is really the experience, the modeler's experience. But now we use the DFT data because we can generate a lot of more data from DFT and the machine learning model. Then we can generate the, all the model parameters very efficiently. And uh, of course, we have to be we have to balance the model complexity, basically number of uh, parameters, and uh, and also that not overfitting, right? So it's model fitness and complexity. So we have a criteria for that. And then after that, all we know those parameters are not very accurate because the face face equilibrium calculations would not be very accurate. So we need to we need to revise it, we revise the parameters, use the face boundary data. And the equilibrium data, we refine the parameters with the Markov chain Monte Carlo method. Okay, it's based on parameter estimation and the phase equilibrium data is important. And at the same time, because we do this kind of uh, based on parameter estimation, then you can have certain, a certain quantification as a product of it. And then to do all this calculation, we need uh, energy minimization. So that's why we developed a pack fat to do the a, a the energy calculation the minimization. So the one there's few features. One is that because we use symbolic computing, so you can take your own model. So you can take your different models into it. You don't have to stay with only models provided by Packard, but you can implement your own model. And because we are interested in the long equilibrium system, so we can calculate the property with the psi as independent variables. That means long equilibrium state. Of course, you can do equilibrium, equilibrium calculation, get it for energy minimization. And in that case, this code has been, uh, it has been very well developed by Richard Otis, and he won the run up award for NASA in 2019 for the software of the year. So now we got the tool, we got the data. So we've not developed a data ecosystem. We got an ocean of data. So what it means is that, we're going to do the portal data, the data generation for theoretical prediction, uh, prediction, including machine learning, DFT, AMD, finite element, with mechanical properties. Of course, experiment, experiment data are very, very important. But experiment data are mostly for equilibrium or close to equilibrium. But for long equilibrium states, we really have to rely on, on theoretical predictions. So then, after that one, after we collect the portal data, we'll do the Process, we develop the process data to the Kafka database, databases basically is a pack of an aspect. And after that one, we can design materials, okay? This design is actually called rational design, okay? So we can design materials, do simulations and then mix materials. And then we can also optimize the, the manufacturing process to reduce the scrap or called zero scrap manufacturing. And then you can predict the surface life of the material. In the process, you get new data, right? The new data will come into your portal data and then revise your database. So this is, a, you see, you're given a cycle here, that's an ecosystem. At the end, your materials has to be recycled. At the end of lifetime, you get another set of data into it. Now you can put in the, as a part of a 
the input data, they revise the, the Kafka database again. So the data ecosystem, it will be continuously cycled. As shown here, it's with the ecosystem like the ocean and the river and the lake. That's why we call the ocean of data. So because the data, we have tools for the material design, but the material design we have to typically do is actually rational design. What it means is that we use our experience, our intuition, then I guess something possible, right? Then we do computation, okay? But can we do better? Okay, that's right. We should do, do better is inverse design, okay? So recently we have started a project uh, with, uh, with uh, quite a few professors at Penn State. One of them is working on the inverse design, okay? So we developed this called CGAM, Conditional Generative Adversary Networks. So as a tool for inverse design. So what it means is that now we give all the properties we want. If you have to find out the chemistry, we can always process it, compare them together. So the idea is that is it different for is a, is a, is machine learning. The difference is that you develop a generator, okay, generative generator. So in that sense, that uh, you can now give the desired properties, okay. And you develop this uh, a random uh, latent uh, space code. This is a generator. It can give you the, a set of the alloys with desired properties. So that's very exciting. So we are testing for the high entropy, uh, high entropy refractory alloys. And this paper, you can see that one. You can download the paper now. You just get it uh, online published. Now, so really the idea is that you get the tool data and they, then the design, right? So this is a, is a, is a, is a system. It's not just a, a one-way traffic. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cycles, right? You have cycles. That's what we call ecosystem of, of materials and manufacturing. You can use input data, data from the literature and the cover database. You put them together, you get an ocean of data. So for the ocean of data, we're going to do material design develop a new neural networks, and then we can design new materials. Then we can do the first spin calculations. Then we can develop physical surrogate models, own the experiments. So all of them generate new data. The data goes back into the ocean of data, but the data also will go back to the capital modeling, generate database, also go back to the ocean of data. So the idea we have in mind, oops, is that we have a pool of data, we get a process data with the SIGA inverse design, which has manufacturing, self to recycle, get a product data. Okay, so it's continue to recycle uh, these iterations, make our database better, do it better, and a better design and better materials. With that one, thank you for your attention. Again, congratulations to Mark for receiving the ASM Gibson Award.